Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to thy tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin, for I acknowledge my transgressions. And my sin is ever before me against thee. Thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thy mightest be justified when thou speakest. And be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shaped in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desires truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden parts thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear the joy and the gladness which the bones have that, that, that broke may be broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Uphold me with thy free spirit. Then will I teach, teach transgressors thy ways and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, of my salvation, that in my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. O Lord, open up my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else I will give it. Thou delightest not in the burnt offerings. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart, O God. Thou wilt not despise. Do good in thy good pleasure to Zion, build the walls of Jerusalem. Then shall thou be pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness, with burnt offerings, and whole burnt offerings, then shall I offer bullocks upon thy altar. Let us just begin and get in a place of pot, uh, prayer and our posture. Father, we just bless your name this morning, God, and we honor you, Father God. God, this time, God, of that we take this time to dedicate to you, Father God. God, that we begin to learn, God, and begin to tear down, Father God, that you may build us up, God. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus, God, we thank you this morning, Father God. Uh, we ask that we welcome the Holy Spirit in this place, God, uh, not to build it, but us, God, in the name of Jesus. Uh, we bless your name right now, God. Uh, we ask, God, that everything, God, that is not part of the kingdom, God, uh, that God, the bricks, Father God, the mortar, Father God, uh, that we've laid ourselves, begin to tear down, God. Uh, in the name of Jesus, we declare that we pray, God, uh, that we will have clarity, Father God. Uh, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, for this time of self-examination, God. Uh, in the name of Jesus, God, uh, we bless your name right now, God. Uh, we honor you in this house, God. We thank you, God, uh, for waking us up this morning, God. Uh, renewed in our minds and our bodies, God. Uh, in the name of Jesus, God, we bless you right now, God. Uh, Honor you in the name of Jesus. I need some water. I can't the I can't the Red Kadana begin to just lift up your hands up and begin to exalt the name of the Lord. I run back Kadana Masha. Lord and Amashi, we thank you, God, for what you're going to do, God, in this season. God, I can't the I can't the Masha. We honor you right now in the name of Jesus. I come, God, this morning to break the back of the enemy. We come this morning to break the back of the enemy. We come for fingers names in the name of Jesus. We come right now in the name of Jesus. We come this year. We're not praying this year.
we cover them right now in the name of Jesus. Yeah, death may be going through the land, but it shall not come. Now my dwelling place in the name of Jesus. Come on and declare it. And then I'm not shitting. And I'm going to say, why? Because the blood is over my doorpost. My forehead. The blood is inside of me. The baptism of the Holy Spirit protects me. The kind of the shit. Oh, yeah. 
And we honor you. We honor you, God. Come on, give me a couple more seconds to lift up your timber. I don't know what you need to release. But God says set this time to release. We're kind of going to put it in the atmosphere so that he can capture it. So that he can bless it. Roma kind of masa. Thank you. 
declare the decree. Favor, fall upon your people today, God. Favor, 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 fall on your people today, God. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, I have a word for you, faith, that was delivered to me yesterday. And the person began to say, hallelujah, that they only, they simply told me to tell you that they, you, you came to them, that, you, that your face was flashed before them as they were in prayer. And they, what the God told them to tell you, uh, and I'm relaying the message. God says, I heard you the first time. I heard you the first time. I heard you the first time. And that's what they told me to tell you, that God told them to tell you that he heard you the first time. Continue just worship him. We pray for our speaker, God, our teacher today. God, that he got our, our, our theme, our classes on worship today, God. Worship is not about singing.
Don't look with me. Um, I want to do a, a, a blessing this, this month. God had told me to do some, something. Um, you can't answer. <laughs> See, I had to tell the walking encyclopedia, but you can't answer. <laughs> I want you to stand to your feet. If you know the answer to this question, you can't stand to your feet. You're standing on it, so you're going to be out if you don't come here and sit down in that seat. I'll give you 20 seconds to come in here. Yes, yeah, she's going to be out of this one. She'll be mad. If you know the answer, listen, put your phone down because you can't do it. Stand to your feet as fast as you can. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> How many books are in the Old Testament? Yes, sir. Okay, now I want you to think a little bit. How many commandments? are actually in the Bible. Don't jump on your feet so quickly. Listen to what I'm saying. How many commandments are actually in the Bible?
First, I'd like to express my thanks to God and my appreciation to his son Jesus, who died in my place. To my sister, the angel of this house, Apostle Price. Amen. To all of you, my father's children, to um, retire, our, our retired prison worship leader, Pastor Emeritus, but be a quick amen to my mother and father-in-law for being here, amen, and to my study partner, the one who keeps me grounded, Sister Brittany, to Pastor Franklin. You better go and help yourself. Y'all probably, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna tell a little bit of business real quick. But you're looking at a woman who's been through more surgeries than there are people in this room. Uh, she shouldn't be able to walk, but she walked in here. I wish I had the right church. In the middle of last month, she lost her brother real quick almost fell into a depression but I, my Bible says that when you put on the garment of praise can I tell y'all I, I work for her I'm her home health aide I work for her and I have watched her praise her way but she didn't have no words and all there was was tears so listen y'all let her do her thing over there because she needs something from God today and the truth be told, there are a few of you sitting in this room under the sound of my voice. And I know we got class, but listen, this ain't about me. This is about this is about him. And so I want you to get what you need this morning. So listen, take your time. I'm not gonna be before you long. So get what you need from God this morning. I don't
Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. 
life, if I happen to be talking about you, just turn your light on so I know you're home. But if you do not have a worship life privately, you cannot have one publicly and it be legit. Come on now. Come on. 
There can be no corporate worship without private worship. Because worship is internal and intentional. Come on. And we got, you need, a, you need a, something to write with, Mom? Paper? Hold on, hold on. We, we got, we give you something to write with. So the first thing that you have to understand is that worship is internal and it is intentional. You don't slip into worship. <coughs> Not only that, but worship also, unlike praise, has a sound. Now, somebody gonna get mad. My in-laws are here, so please don't try me today. I want them to know that I know how to act in the house of the Lord. You cannot slide in to worship. The Bible says make a joyful noise. Finna hurt somebody feeling. If you can't sing in the shower, this ain't the place to try it. Now, y'all laughing, but I'm serious. We've got to, because here's the thing. Your tone can alter the flow of worship Come if on. you ain't on key. Come on, now. Come on. There is a sound that worship, so if you always flat, your worship should stay private before it ever becomes public. Now, that's not me dogging nobody out, but there is a sound that gets God's attention. Song says there's a sound that is pleasing to his ear. If it sounds like you scratch your nails on the chalkboard, that ain't it. Why is that vital? Because one, if you have the wrong people leading worship, the worship then becomes tainted. Come on, that's true. And so if while I may love to sing. And I don't have the voice to sing. I'm better in a corporate atmosphere in the background than I am trying to lead up front. Amen. This is where we got to check our egos. Worship has no place for your ego. That's right. None. I'll get to my notes in a minute. I just got to go with what's in the, what's in the room right now. Amen. Worship has no place for your ego. Let me say this. Just because you hear a song doesn't mean that that song is appropriate for church. Some of these gospel artists produce what's called concert music. Concert music don't belong in God's house. Why not? Y'all can, y'all, if I say something, you got a question, talk to me. Help me. It's for entertainment. Worship it's never about you. It's about him. Now, to the preachers that are watching via social media, they're going to get mad. Please don't call my phone later. Preaching is not the most important part of service. That's true. That's true. Why? Because the Bible declares that preaching is edification to man. Come on. Right. Preaching don't edify God, it edifies you. Because my message is to inspire you to be better. I don't inspire God to be better because there is nothing better than God. So therefore, the preaching is not what's most important. Worship is. Because praise and worship is about God. And so preachers, if you're in a service, and I've, I've had this happen to me several times, and the Spirit comes through, and lays folks out, you insult God if you continue to try and preach a message. You really out of order. And if I ever see it at my church, I'm going to set you down. Hey, it's been real. We'll still give you your offering. Calm down. But you have to be able to be sensitive to the Spirit of God. And this starts with your personal relationship. I would encourage you all to write this down, get this book. I'm actually about to get it for our church because this is where we are getting ready to start our Bible study. 
name of this book is called Enjoying Intimacy with God. I forget who the author is, uh, but you can find it on Amazon. I think the book is like $10, the paperback. It's two versions of it, but if you get it from Amazon, you want the one that's kind of got the sunset backdrop, that's the one you want. The opening line of this book, chapter number one, I, when I first read this book, I was in prison. Jay Sanders. I believe that's who it is. Jay Sanders. I'll put it in our group page so you can get it. Enjoying intimacy with God. The opening line to this book, I, I, I found this book while I was locked up in prison. See, what happens when you walk away from God is God will remind you that you don't quit him. Mm. He'll quit you before you ever get a chance to now. quit him. And I tried to quit God. God was like, let's see who's better at this, me or you. So I was facing 88 years in prison. I ended up only doing 11 months. Now watch this. Because of arrogance, I was mad at God that I still had to do that 11 months. Because that's how we are as people. Because the, the, the modern church has told us that when God brings us out, and when God gives us grace, that there is no repercussion for the wrong we've done. And so what happens is, is that God get graced me by knocking off 88 years of a prison sentence and making me do 11 months. And because he didn't bring me all the way out, I got upset. And when I got upset, I stopped worshiping. Because that's how we are. When we get mad at people, when we get mad at God, we stop worshiping. The opening line to this book says, you are as close to God as you choose to be. What does that mean? That if you don't feel God, it's because you ain't nowhere near him. Come on. Not that he walked away from you, but you're not near him. How do I know? The Bible says, draw nigh unto me, and I will draw nigh unto thee. It means if you come close to me, I'll come closer to you. So our praise has to be what first? It has to be internal. It has to be intentional. Our worship has to have a sound. Now, let me give you, get to my notes real quick. I'm doing all right so far, y'all. Y'all following me? I ain't lost nobody. All right. The wor worship means a feeling or expression of reverence or adoration. A feeling or expression of reverence or adoration. Now, when your worship is internal, it's going to make somebody mad because you probably said this. When your worship is legitimate, the evidence of your worship is your praise. Yeah. You ever put a put a pot on the stove to boil something? And what happens? If you don't leave enough space in that pot or enough uh, for the air to get through or even uh, slide the pot off slowly, what happens is, is that that pot begins to boil over. When your worship is legitimate, there is an outward production in which we call praise. So folks who say, oh, I'm just not that type of praiser, then the truth is you're just not a praiser, period. Ain't no such thing as I'm not that type. Now, there are some folks who by nature are just natural worshipers. That's, that's who they are. <laughs> Every church needs them. Leaders, hear me. If somebody ain't clapping and shouting, but they got tears crying, don't say nothing, don't insult them. Because what they are doing is continuing the atmosphere for God to move for those that are praising. Amen. We insult people when we tell them, oh, you must not feel God. No, 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 no. I had to learn this. That some folks were designed to worship because in praise and worship there has to be balance. Right. If everybody's shouting, who's worshiping? Exactly. Who? Nobody. So I need somebody that is continuing to keep the atmosphere conducive to the spirit of God so that God can move. Okay. 
So your worship is a, your worship produces an outward response, which is our praise. Now, there are some folks that would like to praise, but they can't because they worship too deep. And I didn't think that was possible. But there, there is a such thing as us being extremely deep into worship. Now, this typically happens to me while I'm behind the wheel of a car. I don't understand why, but that's when it gets me. I've tore up a many a forklift at work listening to my music and the right song come on. And I, I, and I start thinking about who God is, not what God's done. See, this is why some people can't worship. It's because you, you, we confuse our worship with what God has done for us, right. not off of God's sovereignty. Come on. Come but on. your worship, you worship God simply because he's God. Come on. If he never does anything, Come on. you still owe him worship because of who he yeah. is. Yeah. And because of who he is, that, that alone is enough for you to say, God, I thank you. So our worship never has anything to do with what God done. That's why the song says, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, what happens? I dance. Mm -hmm. Not I worship. Come on. Because what God has done is where my praise comes in. Right. I thank him for what he's done. I, I praise him for what he's doing. And I praise him for what he's about to do. But I worship him first. Right. Praise team, let me help you out. Hello. Because I saw this this morning. You got to change the order of your songs, right? You can't go from, you can't go from worship, shout me real quick and then drop me again. You, you, you agitate the spirit like that. And I'm, I'm not here to be critical. I'm here, to, I'm here to be helpful. I was a praise and worship leader for a long time. The service has to flow. In all honesty, all, all non-essential business needs to be handled before the praise team mounts the floor. Amen. Offering, announcements, all that's done before the praise team is the floor. Why? Because if God is trying to do something, I don't need a break because we got to collect the money. Right. Right. I don't want to welcome a single visitor. Because worship, praise and worship is about God. So when, when the praise team, when y'all are selecting you, and listen, don't just select random songs. There needs to be a flow to it. There needs to, the, the, your, your, your praise and worship, need, it needs to flow naturally. Long pauses, people have a, a attention span of three to five minutes. That's true. After three minutes, you've lost them. So the transition from one song to the next should never take anything longer than 60 seconds. If it has to, whoever is in charge of the praise team, and this is something else about people, believe it or not, people like repetition and consistency. Right, yeah, that's true. So you need to have one person designated to be the exhorter while the worship team is getting themselves together. Amen. Now, don't make you mad again. It's all right. If you're not praying, stay outside till service starts. Mm -hmm. This hinders worship. Mm -hmm. Don't believe me? I got some Bible for you. I need somebody to get for me these the following scriptures. John chapter 4, verse 24. Psalms 103 and uh, verse 1. Psalms 95, 6. Matthew 21, 9. And then Psalms 100. I'll let y'all write those down so you can read them on your own time. What was the second one? Uh, the first one is John chapter 4, verse 24. The second one is Psalms 103, 1, verse 1. Psalms 95, verse 6. Matthew chapter 21, verse 9. And then Psalms 100 in its entirety. One more time, I got you. John 4, 24. 
Psalms 103, 1. Psalms 95, 6. That's, chapter, that's Psalms 95, verse number 6. Real quick tangent. Psalms does not have chapters. Psalms is three different books. And unless you're reading from the right book, Psalm chapter 1 and book 1 ain't the same number in uh, book 3. So when you're reading Psalms, don't ever say Psalms chapter number because you're lying real quick. It's a force of habit. You've just been taught wrong. Back to our regularly scheduled program. So Psalms 95.6, Matthew 21.9, and then Psalms 100. Who has Psalms 100? Can, some, can you read that for me real quick? Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all you lands. Stop right there. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all you lands. That is a declarative sentence. It's not a suggestion. It's not even asking you to. That is a command. He is giving you instruction to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Who? All ye lands. That includes everybody. The word all includes everything and excludes nothing. Go ahead. Serve the Lord with gladness. Stop right there. Serve the Lord with gladness. What does that mean? That means that in spite of how you feel, what's going on, what didn't go right, who didn't do right by you, who you feel didn't do right by you, who didn't speak to you, who didn't text you, who didn't come over for a sneaky link, whatever, whatever it is, you serve the Lord with gladness. Why? Because your service to God, even in the church, and this is how I don't understand how people can get mad at people and then leave God. Because your service in here ain't to Apostle Price. Amen. Did y'all hear that? So watch this. If you ever got mad at her and didn't do what, what you said, what you say God told you to do, you need to repent. Amen. Amen. Yep. That's right. Amen. If you've ever left the church because you was mad at the pastor and you said that God sent you there and God didn't tell you to leave, guess what? You need to go back to that pastor and repent. Because you either lied then or you're lying now. Which one is it? Amen. You serve the Lord with gladness. Why? Because that's who you're serving. Church, believe it or not, when you come to church, this, this will stop a lot of so-called church hurt. Because when I come to church, church about me. I don't care what none of y'all got going on. Amen. This is personal for me. You, you, don't, you, didn't, you didn't get me through this week. Come on. That's right. You may have felt irritated this week. Come on. But you didn't get me through. You, you didn't wake me up this morning. <laughs> and I know that sounds cliche, but the truth of the matter is, is that you ain't paid not a single one of my bills. You ain't got nothing on my snacks. None of that. So how dare I allow you to disrupt the one that I serve? Amen. And any listen, and I, I I understand. There's times as the pastor that I've had to ask God to get me right before I walked into church because some folks in the church had already gotten on my nerves. Amen. They had already they had already. I remember one Sunday, one Sunday morning. Uh, I had to fire a musician. She cussed me from Amazing Grace to Flowing Time. What? The, I, I had to fire, because here's the thing. If you if you hear one, if you getting paid to do a job, I expect you to be on time, period, point blank. You don't get to show when you feel like it. Amen. You don't. Especially if, if we paying you. No, you're going to be here when I tell you to. Second off, you don't get to make rehearsal when you feel like making rehearsal. If we have a set rehearsal date, if we need to adjust the time, we can. But you don't get to, well, I ain't going, I'm not coming. Okay, you fired. I hire, I hire slow, I fire fast. So you have, to, you, have to, you have to understand that when you come into the house of God, you come in to see him, not your neighbor. Amen. Amen. And so, this would, as I said, this would stop a lot of church hurt. Because what happens is, is that when we show up here, our focus is wrong. That's right. That's right. And now we got to we got to pray to our till 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 blood start running down our foreheads. And I got to I got to scream myself dumb long before I'm ready to, because I've got to now try and shift the atmosphere 
Because when you came in, your mind wasn't right. right. Go ahead, keep reading, Pastor Quick. Stop right there. Your worship can't be pure if you don't understand who you belong to. Mm. On that side of the door, life is happening. I don't care how much you shout and dance in here, you don't stop time out there. But when you come in here, what happened out there ceases to exist because now you're in his presence. Amen. At least you ought to want to be. Amen. Can I let y'all in on a little secret? Everybody who comes to church don't want God's presence. That's Amen. right. That's right. Know how I know? Because nobody shows up to church for deliverance, but everybody comes for prophetic. Come on. Come on. I don't want God. I just want what he got to say. That's right. When you can when you can pack a church for a prophetic conference and only get two people to show up for prayer meeting, that means you don't want God. Come on now. Listen, if I'm talking to you, just turn your light on so I know you're home. Come on. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Whatever happened on the other side of that door has no relevance in here. Right. Who you slept with, who you sexted last night, that's when you send the photos via text message. Mm -hmm. All of, none of that matters when you come in here. Y'all not gonna say, don't do that. <laughs> Y'all not, don't do that. And if you didn't, if you ain't doing it now, you used to. Yeah. Come on. Mm. Come on. Mm. The problem, this is why it takes us so long to get started in praise and worship. My God. Last night, we ran some errands and we went out to Cheddar's. We had something to eat. We stopped at Burger King and Chicken. Burger King flirted with me. I thought she was going to leave here. That has nothing to do with God. <laughs> nothing. Now, while that was my life yesterday, that's what happened. While I was praying for that lady at Burger King, she almost left here. Because she definitely, I'm talking about the way she. She looked at me like I was biscuits and gravy. And she was like, I know she didn't. Come on, we pull off. Father, in the name of Jesus. I had to pray real right now, God. Started to call my mother-in-law and say, listen, pray for your daughter real quick. Because the devil got it. <laughs> listen, she said, I know she did. Get my sandwich. Oh, Father. Whew. Listen. But none of that's relevant. Once you come in here, because you didn't come in here, it's not a social club. And this is why we this is this is why the church is no longer a hospital because we've turned it into a nightclub. Come on now. This is for me to come and share the latest tea, then post on Facebook, church folks ain't real, because I told all my business to everybody in the church, and somebody sold it to somebody who don't go to our church, and now I'm mad because my business out, but my business out because I can't keep my mouth shut. Y'all don't gotta say anything. Come amen. on now, it's be quiet. Sometimes in the church you need to learn to develop the spirit to shut up. Mm -hmm. Some of us operate real heavy in the gift of gab. Mm -hmm. So your mindset has to be right. Listening to the Isley brothers, R. Kelly, all that on the way to church, your mind ain't right. No. It's not. Thank you. Because I like her. Like her. Listen. Now, now, now watch this. There is a time and place for that. Yes, ma'am. Excuse me. So you're absolutely right. Because there is there is a big difference between secular music and gospel music. There was a time when, and, and I tested because I heard somebody say this. They would drive to work listening to secular music, and when they got into work, their their attitude was totally different. Mm -hmm. But when they listened to gospel music on the way to work, their attitude was totally different. So I tried it. Mm -hmm. And I have found that when I, if I listen, which I don't, but if I have was to listen to secular music, 
what's coming into you is what's going out of you. Yes. That is true. Now, I ain't gonna lie, there were times where I worked in the warehouse um, because of what I had to do. There were times that I was listening to Plies, T.I., and I'm still saved. Um, and, and I listen to secular music, right? At, at my wedding, watch this. The service is going to be safe, sanctified, Holy Ghost sealed. Right. Don't show up to the reception and get thinking you're going to get, that's, that's not the place for that. <laughs> it's not, that's not it. Sorry, Mom. That's just not it. <laughs> we won't be no come to Jesus. Well, you have time right there. It's the same. It won't, be, it won't be because here, here was the thing. This the, the church. The church has shifted people yeah. into being controlled. Come on, yes. Versus understanding that there is there is a way for you to have balance and right. still be Holy Ghost filled. Yeah. 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 There is. Because listen. That's good. Never mind. I ain't know y'all business. I don't know. <laughs> All right. You did it get hot? My, mine did. Oh. <laughs> Um, but there, there is a time and place for that. But when you're coming in to worship, your mindset needs to be on worship. You need to come into, you need to come into the house of God with the spirit of expectancy. You need to expect something from God. Let me read you something from one of my favorite early church fathers. Uh, St. John Christopherson said, We pray not to inform God or instruct him, but to beseech him closely to be made intimate with him by continuance to, in supplication to be humbled and be to, and to be redeemed of our sins. St. John Christopher also said, uh, but now instead of organs, Christians must use the body to praise God. Uh, also, this one right here, because this is where a lot of us get lost. He says this, this is one of my favorite quotes by him. Uh, he says, a comprehended God is no God. What does that mean? Anybody want to take a stab at that? I'll say it again. A comprehended God is no God. A God who I can understand. Yeah. There you go. The church has eliminated the room for the mysteries of God. Come some on. things, we just had this conversation yesterday. Some things about God, He's never going to reveal to you because it ain't none of your business. That's right. That's right. And He don't answer to you. That's right. Amen. And so there is a there is a time during worship. Where you don't need to understand what's taking place because right. it has nothing to do with you. That's right. If God decides to, and this is, and, and I've had to learn how to do this. I've had to learn how to preach while somebody getting their deliverance. Right. That got nothing to do with me. Right. Y'all saw what happened when she went in. That that got nothing to do with me. Come on, let's keep service moving. You don't stop service now. This is where we mess up because nine people want to run over here mm -hmm. for what? Because they want to be in their business. For what? You nosy. Sit down. Sit down. Let me say this. This is my friend. I love her. Sunday morning, y'all need to talk to her at all. Y'all got nothing to say to her. Nothing. You ain't got nothing to say to him. Praise him. Y'all know what y'all singing for. Y'all show up. Y'all don't know what key, tempo, all of that. But you disrupt worship when you disrupt the leader. Amen. That's true. Saturday night after 6 o'clock, you ain't got no business calling her phone. Unless it is a dire emergency. And let me just be real. If someone died, ain't nothing she can do about it. Right. They're going to watch this. They'll still be there on Monday. Mm -hmm. Okay? Why is that important? Because if I'm dealing with your problems while I'm trying to hear from God, I miss what God said concerning you because you talking to me and not him. My God, that's true. That's true. That ain't because she up uppity and stuck up and thinks she's better than you. No, she worked for God, not you, contrary to popular belief. He called her. Me in the Bible study. He equipped her. And watch this. If you move your membership, his anointing will still rest on her. Right. His, well, because what he had planned for her, watch this, was never contingent upon you. you. That's right. right. That's right. Amen. Bible study. As the, as the assistant pastor, now watch this. As the assistant pastor and your minister of music, before you talk to her, you ought to run it by him first. That's right. That's, That's true. Though. That's right. 
If it make it to her, it's gotten out of hand. Mm -hmm. There should be certain things that never, I, I serve as the assistant presiding bishop of an organization. There are certain things my presiding bishop, my bad here, there are certain things my presider don't know. Why? Because it's my job to deflect. His job is to see. Amen. And if he looking at what I'm looking at, who's looking at what God's got for us? That's right. All of this is connected to our worship. All of this is connected to our worship. When we, when we, when we get so caught up, and let me say this, religion is not the enemy of relationship. Religion produces accountability that relationship can't handle. Say that again, please. Please. Did y'all catch that? Let me say one more time for the people in the back. Religion is not the enemy of relationship. Religion produces accountability where relationship cannot. Now, for all those who say, I'm over this religious thing, woe unto you. Because if your relationship with people is unfaithful, I'm going to just stop right there. How do you expect to be faithful to God Come on. without having to be held accountable? Because we're not accountable to one another, and that's why everything is permitted in church today. Because we're not accountable. I can, I, can, I can come into church with my outside mindset and then get upset when the church says, no, no, this ain't the place for that. Oh, they just don't want, oh, they, they, they want to be religious. No, they want you to be accountable. Accountability is important to your worship. Everybody in here ought to have an accountability partner. I have one. Amen. I have an accountability partner. I got a new one. I'm telling myself, um, trying to stop smoking cigarettes, and I'm still saved. Right, so what I had to do was get somebody, and I got two of them because sometimes I'm, I'm real hard headed. I need back up. <laughs> uh, but I had to find somebody that when they saw me with one would hold me accountable, not because I'm a preacher, but because I desire to be healthy. Right? If you don't have anybody to hold you accountable in your prayer life, when the last time you prayed? What was the reason you prayed? Because if your if the disconnect notice got you to speaking in tongues, you <laughs> it's too late at that point. You go down, you go down to AES if you want to. Break it, take my mic. Listen, they'll turn your lights off. You'll be worshiping in the dark. Listen, candlelight services from here on out. Accountability is important and it's vital to our worship. I'm almost done, but it is vital to our worship. Because where there is no accountability, how can I remain faithful to what I don't have to be accountable to? That's why our relationships with people are messed up. Our relationships with our families are messed up because we're not accountable to our family. We're not. We're not accountable. So I can walk into church when I feel like it. I can be late. What's gonna happen? I sing on the praise team. You not you, you go you gonna let me sing anyway? No. So no lie. One Sunday, my church. Give me one second. I'm gonna say this. I got you. <laughs> Fix your face, Apostle. No. <laughs> one Sunday, I got fed up with my church showing up late, and I left. When they pulled up, I left. What you doing? Service started one. This is what I understand. I moved it from 11 because y'all couldn't get there at 11 to 1.30. And you mean to tell me at 2.15? Because there's no accountability. And so now what happens is, is that when they get there and I, oh, okay. It's 1.45. Let me go on and pray. Sing this song. By 1.50, I'm on my way home because I got what I needed. That's right. If there is no accountability, we'll treat God like we treat each other. Yeah, Go ahead, yeah. Apostle. We're more uh, 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 faithful to the time clock at work, to something that's going to give us more, that's temporal than the one that woke us up to get there. If you, there, there's stipulations. If you get late at work, you get a point, or mm -hmm. you may get fired. But the way, you, yes, the way, the way 
that we treat, um, um, and I know this is the way we do do church is how we do church a little bit, and sometime in our life is how our uh, secular life is, is how our relationship with God is. But you're more faithful to somebody that you can see mm. than the person that you can't see that can withdraw and take your uh, take your life take your life from you, and that's a messed up relationship. We need to be. If you got a position in the church, you need to be on time, on point, because there's a flow. Like you said, worship is a lifestyle. There's a flow you don't want to make. You don't want to mess up. Me, y'all saw my pastor when he came in here, Pastor William. I'm gonna tell you something. I open the eyes for the key to open the door. I turn the hammer on. I put every mic on. I learn how to uh, fix the board. I learn everything that he knew that he normally do. So he wouldn't do. So he walked straight in, go in the office, do what he got to do. I didn't wait for him to start serving, tell me to start. I started serving. I had it going. When he came out, when he wanted to come out, it was still going on. It's a flow of worship. So check, are you more faithful to the man at work or to the one that you can't see? Check your 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 faithfulness. Right. And then I'm going to back, piggyback what you said. Not just be mad at me, but mad at somebody in the church. Okay. Don't let be mad at somebody in the church and you walk away. You a liar because God told me to do this and this and that. But you leave that place and not fulfilling what you said God told you to do in them places. So you got doors open that you need to shut mm -hmm. and repent. God, I missed it. I'm sorry. I thought so. And your relationship with people is, should not predicate your relationship with God. Do your job. God, when you do your job, God will do something with that person. So I, So these last three things that I want to touch on before I let y'all go. And I'm going to start with this one because it's just not saying here. <coughs> Giving is vital to your worship. Giving. Mm -hmm. Now, somebody tell me don't say it. Quick say don't say it. Don't say it. All right. I'm say not. it anyway. All right. Well, <laughs> offering time. Oh, Let's not read Malachi anymore. Oh, that text is taken way out of context. Yes, it is. The word meat in the text is literal, it's talking about for real meat, like ribs, stuff like It's talking about for real meat. It's not appropriate for, that's not appropriate for giving. Because when it says, bring, bring ye all the tithes into my storehouse, that the, first off, understanding that your tithes in the Old Testament was not money. It was the first fruit because they were farmers. They, they raise your hand in here if you're a farmer. Ra raise your hand in here if you grow crop, crops. Raise your hand in here if you get a time clock. Okay, so you, you, your, your, you don't have a wheat offering to give to God. <laughs> You're not giving him no lamb. You're, you're not, because that's not your thing. You go to work. After you work 40 hours plus, every week or every two weeks, somebody tell your bank, hey, give this to them. You're giving your finance. Now, what about those on a fixed income? This is one of my favorite ones. Fixed income. How do I, how do I give? Still give 10%. Now, let me help you, those of you, because tax time about to come. Some of y'all's church, churches ought to just be bawling because you've been giving wrong all year long. Mm. If you give from what you bring home, you didn't give God your first fruit. That's true. If you give from your net, you're wrong. That's true. You give from your gross. That's, gross. That's what you make. Because what you made before Uncle Sam, he ain't never showed up for a birthday. <laughs> but he before he gets his, that's what you made. Mm -hmm. So you tithe out of that. Now watch this. If you don't tithe out of that, then when tax time comes, you owe 10% of your taxes to the church because you've been robbing God all year long. So do you really want to keep using Malachi? There's a penalty in the Bible that says if you didn't pay your tithe, if you practice, it's 30%. It's in the Bible. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. Now, let me help you out real quick. When you give an offering, and you give your tithes, this is the Bible, your offering is always bigger than what your tithes was. Yes, sir. So we worship wrong because, watch this, in our giving, because we've been given wrong because ain't nobody told us the truth. Right. Right? 
So we don't read Malachi in my church. If we, we don't even really do it. We don't do a scripture. But if we were going to use one, given it shall be given unto you. Good measure, press down, shake it together, run it over. Watch this. Shall men give unto your bosom. You're not giving for God to give something to you. Right. And that's why most of us, our finances stay jacked up. Because we're worshiping in our giving, looking for God to do something. So I'm only doing this because I want you to do You don't get to manipulate God. Right. Well, God, I'm going to give this because I want you to. No, no. Because God said, I said give it before I ever told you what I would do. So giving in your work, giving is, is vital to your worship. So if you didn't, you know, listen, the Lord, the Bible says he'd always give us room for escape. You have an opportunity to make it right. When tax time comes, your taxes come, listen, give your 10%. Because watch this. Most of us are not going to do right with it anyway. We ain't getting no, we ain't getting no stocks and bonds. We're not trying to buy no land. We're going to get new lace fronts and mink eyelashes. Some of these girls look like rabbits out here. Your eyelashes that long. Wow. When you blink, you change the temperature in the room. I was at a service one time, Pop, and the, the pastor was so frustrated with his church for not giving that he told the, he told the women in the church, he said, listen, if you got on a new wig and eyelashes, I'm, you, you got on stolen merchandise. That's it. You got on stolen merchandise. Yeah, he asked the Lord to make every, every one of them bald. <laughs> Make every make every one of them ball. You come in here with 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 mink eye with mink eyelashes on, and you ain't and you ain't gave an offer. Let me help you out real quick. If you're not giving, there is nothing to give back to you. That's right. That's true. That is and my true. church and our bylaws it says this: our church will give you ten percent of what you've given to us all year. So if you've only given a dollar, we got you for dollar for dollar. We can do that. But if you're not giving properly. Now, what if I don't have any income? What if I'm in, in between seasons? Should never be a candy wrapper on the floor. I should have to wash the toilet. If you don't have the finances, give your time. Now, when you start getting finances, that don't mean that you can, like, I'm just going to keep giving my time. No, 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 no. Do, do what you're required to do. But when we, when we aren't giving properly, and again, this isn't so that we make money or anything like that. When we aren't, when we aren't giving properly, our worship becomes tainted. So giving is vital to our worship. Praying is vital to your worship. If you don't have a prayer life outside of here, you'll never have one corporately. Amen. And what we've got to stop doing is trying to force corporate worship and corporate prayer on heathens. Come on, come on, you say that again. And tell them what a heathen is. <laughs> they don't know that either. Christians pray haphazardly. Lord, I'm in trouble. God, she might be pregnant. Whatever the case may be. Right? Those are, those are the type of prayers we pray. Muslims pray three times a day. Jews pray three times a day. Christians, when we feel like it. So how is your worship intimate if you only see God like he a distant cousin? I talked to God at family reunions when we have married five years. Some of your prayers ain't answered because God don't know who talking to him because he don't know your voice. Come on. <coughs> That's hope. They're, oh, I know God. Yeah, but whether you, you might know him, but do he know you? That's, that's the question we really got to start asking. Come on. Oh, I know the Lord. Yeah, but do the Lord know you? <coughs> that's, the, that's, that's the real question. Do he know you? I don't care where I'm at. If DJ make a noise, I know. I know. Right? DJ has a distinct sound. Mm -hmm. He laughs like he crying, he cries like he laughing. I have no he's got it backwards, but what I know it's him. 
Some of our prayers go unanswered because God's unfamiliar with our voice. And watch this. And so because God's unfamiliar with our voice, we become unfamiliar with us. <laughs> Let me help you out. Everybody ain't getting a Moses experience with God. My God. If you praying and asking God a question and somebody comes to you with the answer, don't ignore the answer because it didn't come in a burning bush. Come on now. Come on. So our prayer life is vital. And what do I mean by our prayer life? Right? There's a difference between personal prayer uh, and corporate prayer. Yes. What we do in here is corporate prayer. Yes. Covers us all. But my prayer life at home, it's like I'm talking to God like he's standing right next to me. Right. Hey, man, check this out. Yeah. This is how I, just, I don't have to y'all talk to him. But sometimes I don't got time to be father in the... No, hey, bro, listen. <laughs> listen. Okay? If you don't fix it, it's never going to get fixed. Because I'm tired of stressing about it. But if you don't if you don't have a consistent prayer life with God outside of church, it'll show in here. That's right. And watch this. How do I know that prayer is vital to my worship? Because if you ever try praying and everything start going through your mind to think about, mm -hmm. everybody want to call you, something good come up on TV. You hungry? Listen, uh, this, I was trying to pray the other day, and I swear I was like, what, what is that? Oh, sorry, Lord. Uh, listen. Uh. <laughs> My bad. Yeah, no, I'm big. I, I get hungry. Smells do it for me. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Smells do it for me. But the enemy doesn't want you praying because if you don't talk to God, that means that God can't talk to you. Now, let me help you out real quick. Prayer doesn't mean that you're always the one speaking. That's true, right? That's true. Six of y'all missed that. Sometimes your prayer life requires you to just sit in a room by yourself with no lights, no TV, no telephone, and you're waiting till God says something. That's right. That's right. That's a prayer because prayer is conversation. That's right. That's it. And sometimes we can't hear what God wants us to hear because we're too busy bumping our gums. Listen, trying to talk to Jeremiah is frustrating because whatever you say to him, he can to say back to you. And sometimes I be trying to tell him something. Jeremiah missed the whole assignment. Jerry, go grab this. He, hey, listen, bro. Go, all right, whatever. Tired of That's how God get with us. It's because you've been asking him to do something. And he wants to instruct you on, watch this, on how you can do. Because some of what you're praying for, you don't need God to do. Some of that, some of that power has been given to you. That's right. That's so if you're right. waiting on God to send you a man, you're going to keep on waiting. That's right. You're going to keep on waiting. Why? Because the Bible says a man that finds a wife. That's right. Mm. There you go. That's why you're still single. Because uh, you're waiting on the Lord to do mm. what he told the man to do. Mm. Now, let me say this. I'm going to look this way so I don't see y'all. <laughs> a man don't can't look for what he don't know is missing. Mm. Come on. Say it again. What's that mean? I only look for stuff that's missing when it has value. Come on. Come on. Break it down. And so if all you got is looks and a twerk, that's everywhere. That's not value. That's not valuable. Come on. I can get, I can go right outside right now. Especially the way I'm dressed, I can go right outside right now. I can get that. I mean, I wouldn't recommend me trying it right now. I'd like to. I, I got stuff to do next week, and I don't want to leave here. But tell, tell them, tell the ladies to get out of men's face. Get out your face. Yeah. Because I don't want you. So when 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 our prayer life becomes prevalent, our worship becomes a priority. Amen. Last thing. Make sure I get this right. Fasting is vital to your worship. Now, this new age church has got to have ADHD, HD. There's this high definition. Because you cannot fast from social media. You cannot fast from your tough. Jesus didn't have a Jesus didn't have no iPhone. Come on. I'm quite sure it wouldn't have been an Apple, no way. That was a joke for whatever. Yeah, so deep. 
What's going on, Doc? Fasting, what is, what is, what, first off, what is fasting? Somebody tell me what fasting is. Somebody tell me what fasting is. I thought the mic was on. Anybody but a dead body. All right, so listen, fasting. When they give them an opportunity, oh, okay. they did it for like two months, those that did do it. And everybody didn't do it. Y'all pray for me. Listen. Sacrifice. 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 Sacrifice and what, though? Sacrificing yourself, your thoughts, your You close. What you, what you think you like. There's a difference between fasting and consecration. That's consecrating. Yeah. There's a difference. Yes, ma'am. A closer relationship. Mm -hmm. uh, Abstaining. Abstaining. Separating yourself. I still, I still consecrate you. Fasting is where you don't eat. Mm -hmm. What Jesus? The Bible says that after Jesus was baptized, Holy Ghost led him up into the. This is why most of us don't fast right. Listen to what the Scripture says. The Holy Ghost mm -hmm. led Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Mm -hmm. When you are fasting, that's when the enemy shows up. Mm -hmm. If it is a divine directive from God for the enemy to show up right now. Did you hear that? Yeah. That when you say, Lord, I'm about to fast, God says, go get them. Mm -hmm. Now, if you weak, don't. Don't play with that. Fasting is when you stop eating. It's when you deny your flesh what it needs to survive so that your spirit can mature and develop. You can survive. I know you may not feel like it, but you can survive without your cell phone. You can survive without talking to family and friends. You don't eat for 21 days? Well, no. Well, no. Somebody's coming to the hospital to see about you. Because your body will then start to eat itself because you're depriving it of what it needs to live. So part of the reason that our worship is illegitimate is because we've been fasting illegitimately. Oh, I'm giving up this. I ain't having no, I ain't having no sex for three of them seven days. I'm not, I'm not gonna do this and I'm not gonna do that. And the whole time you stuff in your face. Let me, let me fix this. I'm glad this is live. Daniel didn't have a fast. He was on a 21-day diet. It's a difference. That's not a fast. Because what is fasting? Depriving yourself of what you need to live in the natural so that you can develop in the spiritual. So Daniel, while he was eating the berries and stuff, that's a, that, that's a, that's a diet. It's not a fast because he was eating. So fasting is vital to our worship. Our prayer life is vital to our worship. Our giving is vital to our worship. Remember, if your worship is not intentional and intimate, it's illegitimate. It's not real. Because how can it be real here in front of all of us and it doesn't exist on the other side of that door? It's not possible. Because now what you have is vainglory. You used to have a, correct me if I'm lying, you used to have a young lady that went to my church and every Sunday she would walk up and ask, did you see me shout? Yes, she did. Did I see you shout? I didn't even see me shout. <laughs> Listen, I was caught up in the spirit, but clearly you was looking to see, that, so it ain't real. Right. Tell them, Jerry, it ain't real. <laughs> <laughs> see, you see what I'm saying? I, I did him one simple assignment. He's just gonna run on with it. Listen. So the only the only way our worship, the only way our worship can be what we need it to be, what God requires it to be, is that it has to be intimate. It has to be personal, and then it has to be honest. Now, this is the big one. Because I can't tell when you're lying, but God can. So listen, for those of you that like to utter this statement, be real careful by saying, the Lord knows my heart. That's not always a good thing. 
Sure You're right. He does know your heart. And some of us need heart surgery. Because he ain't happy with what's going on in our hearts. Because we look good. We can shout on cue out here. But in our hearts, we've cussed out everybody in the church. We can't stand them. I don't want to sit next to them. And please don't ask me to pray for them. I ain't doing none of that. John chapter 4 verse 24 says, God is the spirit and they that worship. It's in the, it's in the uh, verses that I gave you. They that worship must worship in spirit and in truth. Now, truth of the matter is that sometimes God I worship even when I don't want to. Leaders, we got to stop talking down to people who come to church who are not doing what we feel they should do. Right. Because the truth of the matter is, is for some folks, just showing up was hard enough. Yeah. And so now, what I can't do is be in church when it was a struggle for me to get here and then you talking out the side of your neck. Because I'm from the show me state. Put your hands on me. I'm sorry. <laughs> Put your hands on me. I don't feel like clapping right now because right now I'm not here to entertain you. I'm not moving till God say something to me. Okay. Right now I'm too broken to lift my hands. Y'all not going to be. This, this is how God responds to us because sometimes you got to come in and say, God, I know I'm supposed to, but where I'm at, you don't believe me? Job chapter one, the Bible says when Job, uh, after Job lost his children, this is what Job did. <laughs> he went, put ashes on himself tore his clothes and then went into worship. Yeah. Sometimes the hardest thing to do is worship while wounded. Yeah. Come on. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good. Mm -hmm. Worshiping while wounded is a different type of worship. Yes. Right. Yes. Right. Because that worship comes from a place of survival. Yeah. Mm -hmm. God, if you don't give it to me today, I'll be to see you later on. Right. That that that's suicide. Right. Those that have committed suicide who, who have attended church before literally went in there with a, with a Job attitude. God, if I don't feel you today. And they couldn't feel God because it was a performance up here and it wasn't God. Come on, come on. Because what has happened is, is that we have allowed people who are gifted but not anointed to try and lead people into the throne. You know, the Bible says that your gift makes room for you and brings you before great men. Right. But it is the anointing yes. that, you, that destroys yes. you. The anointing holds you in position when your gifting will fail. Come That's on. right. That's true. That's true. I feel like preaching, so I got to stop now. Go ahead. And so we can, we can no longer allow people who can, who can watch this, who can move seats but can't destroy you. Come on now. Come on. I don't care how good you sound. If when I leave here, I still want to kill myself, all you did was sound pretty. That's right. Uh -huh. That's it. But where was the anointing? You gifted, but you're not anointed. Mm -hmm. And that's why we got so many young preachers popping up all over creation. You've been in ministry six days, and now you're a chief apostle. Come on, uh -huh. now. You just moved out of your mama's basement. Come on, somebody. Y'all not. Because we have told them that they're gifted right. without making sure that they understood that the gift will only get you so far. But the anointing is what will let me calm down. Come on, that's, that's true. true. That's it. That's right. Oh, sorry. I'm over beside myself. Praise team, let me tell y'all this and then I'm going to leave y'all alone. It ought to be mandatory. That on Saturdays y'all fast and consecrate before you stand up here and sing on Sundays. Amen. It ought not be optional. You won't sing up here? You need to because watch this. Whatever you did on Saturday, still showing up on Sunday morning, and watch this. Somebody walks in here who wants to blow their brains out, and you still trying to be cute because you gifted, but you ain't got no anointing. And watch this. Now you just singing whatever. When God is saying, I need them to hear something specific, and you just try, listen, you got to, worship leaders, y'all got to learn to go with the flow. But watch this, you can't if you still worried about what went on Saturday. It ought to be mandatory. Y'all ought to call each other. At this time, we go, even if it starts small, 
for an hour. We're going to be on the phone, three-way, FaceTime, whatever, uh, uh, Skype, Facebook, whatever. But for an hour, we're not going to eat nothing. We're going to be on the phone together, and we're going to pray until we hear from God, and we're going to move in that direction. And then watch this. Should God show up on Sunday and say, do this and that and what we did, we're going to go with what God said. Because worship ain't about you. The people out here don't care what y'all rehearsed. Sometimes folks come in here only simply because they need to hear from God and the music department is sometimes where God speaks the most to the church. Because some of these jack legs that stand back here ain't heard from God since the last time God heard from them. <laughs> That's true. Y'all like to y'all like to y'all like to do y'all like to do chanting. Let me let me do this because I'm ancient faith guy. We big on chanting, right? Chant, Jerry, don't do that. <laughs> Whatever, man. I'll deal with you later. Your chanting should be intentional, but it should never be random. The middle of a song ain't the place to put a chant in, because that just threw it decent and in order. You may feel it, but do they feel it? If they don't feel it, don't do it. That's right. If you want it to be personal, go home and do that. But you got, because this is a corporate thing. Right. And so I don't, listen, I don't care about what you want to do in here. This is about all of us in here. Listen, change your little heart, it's stupid when you get home. But it's got to flow. And if you're going to do it, make sure everybody else know it. Right. At least, at least make sure the praise team know it. Let them, let them know where you're going. Because the worst thing to see sitting out there is this right here. <laughs> because watch this. I know there's something ain't right up there. That's and right. whatever I was trying to get, you just killed it. Right. That's true. Your facial expressions. Change them. Pay attention to each other. The Lord is higher, but you ain't fooling no almost y'all. Woo. You ain't fooling nobody. I love you, Lord. You don't love nothing. 90% of the conversation is body language. Your body language as a worship leader ought to say what your mouth is saying. Amen. And if you look like this trying to sing to me, in my mind you're lying, and I'm getting on Facebook. <laughs> if my phone's not recording in my hand, just know that something didn't go right in service and I'm, now, I'm, I'm no longer engaged. And I try not to sit on the front row so other people can't see that. <laughs> I try and duck off in the back so I see who else who's having a good church because this is a mess. <laughs> your facial expression, your body language, your tone, everything has got to be in sync. And watch this. Find out what the pastor doing. Mm -hmm. Hey, what you preaching on Sunday? Or what, what direction are you going? And sometimes she may not know till Sunday morning. But y'all need to be so in tune that if she doesn't do nothing but prophesy, then every song that is sung is conducive, and every song shouldn't be a, a, a bump number either. My God. You all not be picking them up, putting them down every Sunday. Listen, come on, I'm too big for all that now. <laughs> I ain't got time to be shouting every Sunday. I'm fat, my knees, I got bad knees. Sometimes I just want to lay before the Lord too. Don't go to sleep. I've seen somebody do that in the church. Went straight to sleep. That wasn't God. They were asleep. Because they snored. That's how I knew it wasn't the Lord. I knew it. But the, 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 the music sets the tone. But ultimately, what you do out there determines what you're doing here. If you don't got it there, you're faking it in here. And let me say this last but not least. If you are faking it in here, you are jeopardizing somebody else's life and somebody else's salvation. That's right. How would you feel knowing that I got up to singing because I wanted to be Beyonce this morning? <laughs> that I didn't allow God's spirit to move because it was about me. And somebody sitting in the back broke and killed themselves because I, I forced them to miss an opportunity to hear from God. What if the Lord showed you that? You find out that they, oh man, so-and-so, yeah, so-and-so, 
killed themselves? Yeah. And God steps in your ear and goes, I could have saved them, but you wanted to show both. Worship is not just pomp and circumstance. Sometimes all, 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 all that's needed is a good worship. Sometimes a, a, a good worship will take you into a, a place where time ceases. Amen. Amen. Worship will, worship will pull you out of what you are drowning in. Mm -hmm. And if you've ever been in a place where you felt like you were just barely keeping your nose above the water, Come on. and you found yourself in a deep worship, and after you came out of there, you, you looked at yourself and said, what was I tripping about? Right. Because worship puts you in the presence of God. Yes. And in Him is fullness. Yes. Mm -hmm. And joy. You can worship your way out of some of the worst situations. Right. You everybody want to dance their way out of it. Right. Listen, after the cardio is over, come on. That's why folks. That's why folks will dance and still be depressed. But you can't be depressed and be in God's presence. Come on now. Right. Thank you. Thank you. you can't do both. You pick, pick and choose. You but you ain't doing both. Make what? Listen, this church wants. All the church wants to do now is just shout and run. That's it. But when, are, when will the church, the ecclesia, say, listen, I've I danced long enough. Now I just need to get in his presence. We have traded performance or his presence for performance and ain't got no power. Come on, Come on now. When leaders in church are dying from things that the Bible said, the saints ought to be able to cure, church ain't got no power. How your pastor die of cancer? Who ain't been praying? Listen, I don't have no church. Let me die and I find out there's some, well, I'm coming back and I'm getting on all of them. Quick. Let something happen. Let something happen to me. And y'all can't, and y'all can't go before God. And listen, all right, come get this mic, pastor, because I'm done, apostle. Quit asking her to pray for you all the time. Where your power at? Why you can't pray for you? Back when the last time you prayed for her? Amen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's so the odds right now are nine to one. Mm. Y'all missed that. Mm. Nine to one, and this ain't everybody. That's nine of y'all with nine different issues, nine different personalities, nine different drama situations going on, and one of her. And so now she got to ask God to cover all of y'all and remember, if she can, to cover herself. Yeah. We insult God when we mistreat God's people, God's leaders, because we always ask him and we're never willing to give. Come get this, come get this, apostle. <laughs> That's a part of your worship. God do this, God do that, God do this. God let the preacher speak to me. When you go, when you gonna speak life back into the one that the one that's given life to you? Amen. Do you know how drained I am on Sunday afternoons? I'm over it. I ain't got nothing left. And God forbid I had a rough week, because I barely got anything on Sunday morning. Sometimes I gotta thank it till I make it. Yes, and I'm asking God, God, I'm Lord, speak to me for them. But God, who's speaking to you about me? Come on, come on. Amen. How are you worshiping God and you're not taking care of what God gave you? When the last time you just slid? It ain't got to be a lot. You ain't got to be balling. When the last time you just slid? Hey, here go $10 on gas. It ain't much, but here you go, Pastor. Amen. Because if you need it, she definitely gave you gas money. Amen. Pastor, I ain't have nothing, but listen, I thought about you while I was at McDonald's. You want something? When was the, that's a part of your worship. Yes, the early church, the church in the Old Testament, they took care of the preacher. The fact that she got to hit a time clock, that's an insult to God. Because she came here from God trying to deal with the, the rules of this world. In Acts chapter 3, in Acts chapter 3, 
the apostle, when the apostle Peter, when the people got upset, went to, they, he said, listen, this is what I need y'all to do. Find you seven men among you. Make them deacons, because their personal business ain't none of my problem. Right. And that's the problem with today's church, is you want, a, you want the pastor to be your God and not yeah. let God be your pastor. That's what the problem is. Come on, right. And so you're not worshiping because you want the pastor to be the provider. On, your pastor's on. name ain't Jehovah Jireh. Come on. That's right. Right. You worship the pastor till she corrects you. Uh -huh. That's true. Uh, yeah. Then it's time to go. Oh, my time is my season over at this church. No, no. Sit on down somewhere. The Bible says that David was playing for Saul. And watch this an evil spirit from God fell on Saul. And while David was doing what he was assigned to do, Saul tried to kill him. What happened to the Christians that can start out like they're going to hold out? Come on. Where them folks at? Give me six of them, God. I don't need a mega church, God. Just give me six folks that's going to start out like they're going to hold out. Come on. That ain't going to be moved by everything. Come on. That's not going to get upset when I don't agree with Come them. On, that's not going to be mad when I correct them. That's worship. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah. But we come in here and we play patty cake with God. Um. Sunday after Sunday. Five million people died in 2021, and we still patty caking with God like we got time. Come on. Mm. You want somebody to, to hoop and, and, and rear back and put on their preaching here? You ain't, watch this, you don't even deserve for me to lose my breath. Mm. I ain't hollering no more this year. I, I, listen, forget them. Huh. That ain't what I want to say. But forget them. Because <laughs> I can't but I can't keep burning me out for folks that ain't gonna be real with God. And if you ain't real with God, I know you're not real with me, so you don't I don't I don't even put it past you. You wanna show God how much you appreciate him, let him see it in how you treat her. Listen, I, I can still fight, don't play with me. <laughs> I'm going to make it clear. That's a part of your worship. Taking care of the men and women of God, that's a part of your worship. The priest in the Bible didn't work. The Orthodox Church, the Roman Catholic Church, the Anglican Church, they preachers don't work. Why? Because they need to hear from God. That's Bible. That's Bible. My job is this right here. The fact that I got to get a time clock means that I'm missing something from God because I got to go to work because I got to pay bills. That, that's the problem. And so now watch this. Her worship is altered because she worried about yours. Trying to make sure you get what you need. And then we have the audacity to be selfish because ain't nobody wondering if the preacher getting what they need. We pour out and pour out and pour out and pour out. When y'all going to pour in? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to go off on that. watching the movie Transformer. I, 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 I mean, you got to transform for so whatever situation and circumstance. It's the truth. Listen, because God didn't let you die last year, you are not serving the same way this year. Amen. That's, That's an insult. COVID wreaking havoc all over the world. Yes, and listen, if you don't believe it, catch a comment when you get to the ICU. Mm -hmm. You don't believe this is this just a hoax by the government? Call me when you get to the ICU and you can't halfway breathe. And then tell me if it's real or not. Y'all better quit playing. You Listen, y'all going to be blood-bought and dirt-covered. Y'all keep playing. Listen. All right now. Blood-bought and dirt-covered. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Don't do that. I, listen, I don't want to find out if the Lord's still healing in this season. Because I'm not going to tempt him. I'm gonna just, let me just go. No, no. But your worship has got to be real. It's got to be authentic. If, if it's not, then what are you doing? Why are you come? Right. What you here for? I, no, that, that was a real question. What you show up for? When I got called into ministry 22 years ago, people around me now, half of them ain't even still here. Huh. So what does that tell me? That I'm called whether y'all here or not. Right. <laughs> so why do you come? 
Ask yourself next Sunday when you get up with your clothes on, ask yourself why I'm going to church today. And if you don't have a legit answer, no offense, don't come. Because you're probably the one altering the worship. It's probably you. While you work, while you thinking this to everybody else. You don't even know why you're in the building. You the one throwing out service. You, watch this, you why you don't feel God. Mm -hmm. They don't like this type. This why they don't like invite me to preach at their church because I, I don't care. We don't have time to keep playing with God. And watch this. When your worship is legit in here, and I'm done. When your worship is legit in here, the Bible says, God, Jesus told the disciples, greater work shall you do. Is right. The Bible says that when Peter walked past the sick man, his shadow healed him. Yes. When your worship becomes authentic in here, a crackhead will walk past this door and the desire will leave their body. Mm -hmm. They have they open their mouth, say one word to God. Hallelujah. But it, the anointing ought to be so heavy in here that somebody driving down the street wanting to commit suicide has to pull over until they figure out what is that emanating that's drawing me. Come on. We say it, but do we mean it? Come on. We say it, but do that is it legit or is it just a cliche? We got to stop playing. Listen, God, here's the thing. Believe it or not, God don't need you. That's right. That's right. That's right. Because he created the angels that have no choice but to worship. Right. Mm -hmm. Your worship is a choice. So you can choose to be real with it or just stay home. You're not, you're not hurting God feel as if you don't come. That's right. Now, here's the catch to that. Make sure you're willing to deal with the consequences of staying right. home. <laughs> right. That's, that's the flip side. Yeah. Yeah. It's always there's, there's, there's all, you have the freedom to go home but make sure that you're willing to deal with what happens when you do if 2021 was just dumpster juice for you you ought to stay in God's face this year you ought to work his last nerve you ought to irritate him every time you turn around he ought to hear your mouth he need to be your best friend. You got some gossip, you need to tell it to him. That's yes. right. Yes. That's who you need to talk to this year. You need to stay in you need to stay in God's face until watch this. God give you what you want so you'll stop talking to him. Uh-huh. <laughs> God only gets to talk to you leave me alone. Go on, now. No, I'm not playing with you. God do the get your stuff, get your fruit snack and ride out, homie. Get your fruit snack and go on now. Go on. <laughs> That's mainly for Jeremiah. Jeremiah loved bull. And I'm talking about it. I got a fit right there. Make my spice drunk. Now I'm at war with a, with a, I'm at war with that young man. God pray for me. He ate my he ate my candy. Uh oh. It ain't no war, y'all. Yeah, listen, I'm out for listen, I'm out for he ate my candy. That's my the good candy. He ate my spice drops. I don't know about that now. <laughs> I love Jeremiah. But no, for real. Y'all, we, we, you, you need to be in God's face this year. And your worship needs to look better than it's ever looked before. Watch this. Regardless to who else is here. If in the middle of service, if you don't feel God, you should just learn to start screaming until he show up. Come on. Some, some of y'all wait for God to show up. But the truth of the matter is, is that what you're dealing with in your life, you ain't got time to wait for everybody else to call him in the room. You got to learn how to call him for yourself. And then watch this. When you call him in the room, everybody else ain't got no choice. But the, why you waiting on the praise team to bring God? Why you didn't bring him with you? And praise team, let me help you out. That's why you're up here. It is your job to pump and prime, just for the record. That's your job. Your job is to set the tone. To set the atmosphere. And if you don't want to pump and prime, get off the praise team. Because you're a hindrance. Listen, I hope y'all learned something today. I hope y'all learned something today. Anybody got any questions? Any questions? I got to preach for 10 weeks, so I got to go. Y'all got no questions? No questions? No key card. So then that means, with no questions, that y'all understand the assignment, and then here's the most dangerous part, that you're willing to execute the assignment. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. yeah.
Because if you ain't got no questions, that means that that, that that next Sunday will look totally different from every Sunday you've ever encountered. Because you didn't misunderstand the assignment. That's what y'all saying? Okay, now, you know, hopefully either it is or it ain't. Well, you either all in or you all out. I, well, listen. Just, just make it, just make it real, y'all. That, at the end of the day, that's 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 what it's all. It's, it's, I promise you, as a as a bishop, it ain't about this jewelry. It ain't about these nice suits. At the end of the day, I want to get in. I don't know that I am. And watch this. I'm not worried about who ain't going. Amen. I know that's right. I don't care. As bad as it's gonna sound, I don't care who's going to hell. I'm trying not to. That's it. Like, like, like legit, that's why I show up on Sundays. Because I don't want to go. When people ask me, who all going to be there? Listen, I know where I'm going to be. Don't answer that question. When people ask you, oh, who going to be at this, who gonna be at church? I, I'll be there. Jesus. <laughs> no, you can't always say that. Because no, sometimes, no, sometimes we, 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 will, we will blame emotion on God and say that God showed up to church when the truth of it is, our emotions just was real high. Yeah. Some of us really don't know what the move of God looked like. Because watch this. In order for God to be omnipresent, if God moves, wherever he was no longer exists. The reason it still exists is because God is still there. So what we, what we, what we, what we construe as a move of God is not, really a, is not God moving. It's us moving in God, seeing what we've never seen before. That's why the scripture says, Oh, magnify the Lord with me. The old saints used to say, God's so big you can't go over him. He's so low you can't go under him. He's so wide you can't go around. You can't. How do you magnify something? Don't do that. You can't. How do you magnify magnification? It doesn't change what you're looking at. It just changes how you view it. That's what we got to do. We got to change how we view God. We got to change how we view God. Not, not based off of what mama said God was, but when was the last time you met God on the backside of the mountain like Moses did? Because believe it or not, Moses knew who God was before, but long before he met him in the desert. Mm -hmm. Because his mother was, was, was Pharaoh's uh, daughter's handmaid, and she told him about him, but it didn't click to Moses until he met God on the backside of the... Some of you need a backside of the mountain experience. Because what mama said God was, God's never been that for you. Because you never needed him to. And so you really have no clue who God is because you've been trying to express God from somebody else's view and not your own. Listen, I, I, I hope this blessed you. I really do. I really do. I thank you for your time and your attention. God bless y'all. Amen. That was a good lesson. Um, I actually learned something 